Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Today's guest is Purvi, and Purvi was born in India. She was raised as a Hindu and she became a devout yogi. In her search for enlightenment, she realised Hinduism, yoga and meditation were not what they seemed. So I'm I'm so happy to uh, invite Purvi to the show. I've seen her testimony on YouTube before and read her testimony and it's lovely to finally have her on the show. So let's welcome Purvi now. Hi Purvi, how are you? Hi, sister. Thank you so much for having me on and giving me the opportunity to share this. I'm very excited. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. As I say, I've, I've um, saw your testimony before on YouTube um, and been very impressed with how eloquently you share um, your experiences with us and, and what God has done in your life. So please really just start and tell us a little about yourself. You were born in India? Yes. Yeah, so I was born in India, but I was only one years old when I came to the United States. And so, uh, you know, I was basically raised here, but in a Hindu family and actually a Brahmin Hindu family. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and also, sorry, by the way, if you hear some raindrops, it's kind of raining over here. Uh-huh. Hopefully it doesn't interrupt the audio. But yeah, so it's it, Brahmin is the highest, you know, the caste system in India. There's various levels. So it's yeah. considered the highest caste. It's a priestly caste and all of these things. And so I was born in such a, a family, you know, growing up with rituals and, you know, the Hindu holidays and um, worship to, st- you know, statues and doing the chantings and burning incense to idols. This was all very normal, going to the Hindu temples. All of this was very normal for me. And I didn't just do it as something... Um, Not always, you know, it's just something to do because my parents did. But I started getting really deeply involved in the Hindu philosophy itself. So it it became more than just a tradition or practice just because my parents do it. Mm -hmm. I started getting involved in reading various literature from from gurus and uh, started doing, you know, the the mind emptying meditations and really involving myself in these practices because I wanted to go beyond the physical. I wanted to experience something beyond this world because at some point in my life, through various struggles, which is a whole other show in itself, you know, different pains of this life and different Mm -hmm. things I went through, you know, in the grief, uh, you know, this is a sinful world. There's all kinds of sorrows and, and griefs and pains. And in that pain, I wanted to be able to, you know, surpass that or try to transcend that or, mm-hmm. you know, look to eternal things for, for hope and comfort. So I started, you know, um, focusing more on um, eternal matters as I saw that diving myself into the world was not beneficial ultimately, that I saw the superficiality of it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I was deeply involved in, in, in the world, you know, uh, and so as I started shifting my mind and, and focus, you know, in and out of various philosophies and, and also in and out of the world, you know, kind of being a yogi on the side and then super, you know, um, worldly also, all of these things, I was going through various phases in my life, lots of emotional trauma. I finally came to a place where I was introduced specifically to uh, an organization by my cousin uh, called Isha Yoga Foundation. And given my spiritual background already, where I was, you know, already by myself super uh, interested in in this type of stuff, you know, with I was already doing meditations, I was already doing various forms of yoga without the organization, without the guru. This was very intriguing towards me, to me. And so, um, especially I was having uh, severe relationship issues, all kinds of stuff. So I was just wanting peace. You know, that's what I was looking for. I was looking for peace and enlightenment. And so I got involved really deeply. I started with the beginner course and I thought that, 
you know, this is just amazing. I'm doing all these postures. I'm doing various breathing exercises. I'm chanting various things. And I'm going and moving on to, to different levels and categories of this stuff. So it's not just beginners now. I'm advancing and advancing and doing more and more of this. It's taking more hours of the day. And, and I'm wanting to and I'm loving it. And I'm experiencing euphoria from it, which is to me, at that time, it was further proof and evidence that this is the correct path. Because, yeah. you know, it's it's just very, very um, alluring when when we trust in feelings. You know, yeah. Uh, I know, I know that you know that as well. So mm-hmm. when I'm feeling all these euphoric sensations, it was it's really like a drug. And so I became, you know, addicted, so to speak, to yoga and to, to, to doing these things. So basically it came to the point where I was head over heels, totally convinced this is the way, and giving out cards everywhere I went for people, telling them, you know, you want happiness for your soul, this is the answer. I went to India to actually live in the ashram in India. Mm-hmm. And completely go to the highest level classes. I'm talking about seven day silence programs where you need intense preparation to be able to go into those things, you know. Um, So, so much happened there. And, you know, in the beginning, in the first few months, yeah, first, I don't know, a few weeks, first month or so, I was just so happy and just, you know, as I said, that euphoria skipping around, basically, like, la di da you know, in this state of just what I thought was bliss. Mm-hmm. And then I was doing everything correctly as told to me by the instructors, by the teachers, in my practices. Everything was correctly done. Mm-hmm. But yet I started getting physically sick, so sick. And my health started deteriorating worse and worse and worse and worse. As I was there and as I was doing the practices, it just got worse and worse. And what we're told and what I was told and what I believed is that this is a process of my karma being released. And it's just something that needs to happen. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And and I, I just need to... Um, you know, ride this out, so to speak, and then it will Mm -hmm. get, but it never did get better. It just got worse and worse and worse for prolonged periods of time. And it was to the point where I was deathly ill. So I had fungal, bacteria, parasitical uh, infections and issues throughout my body, outside and inside. Uh, various problems, all kinds of skin manifestations, three different types of lice, uh, digestive problems. I was rolling in the floor just in so much pain. I mean, the list of symptoms mm-hmm. uh, that is just, just, it just goes on and on and on. And I just would like to, before I, I share any more about uh, exactly how the journey went, and speaking of symptoms, I want to mention that while I was going through all these programs, especially at the highest levels, I was, I was manifesting what I now know to be uh, demons. And, and, and I, was sh- I would shake while I'm doing the yoga and the postures or the chantings. Some of the things that I would manifest would be uncontrollable shaking, a, a burst of energy would come out of nowhere and I would have to run around the the place wherever I was at in the gymnasium or the auditorium. I would run. I would just get this energy. I don't know where it's coming from. I just run. Uh, I would make animal noises coming out of my body during, especially during the high, the highest level yeah. uh, Samyama. It's called Samyama. It's a t- seven day silence program. And, you know, my eyes, you know, rolling around, uh, rolling on the floor, um, intense dancing where I didn't know where that kind of strength was coming from, mm-hmm. uh, laughing, all kinds of these sounds coming out of me. And, and, and I believed the lie that these were manifestations of my enlightenment, that this meant that my soul is progressing forward, mm-hmm. that this is 
this is me connecting with the universe and, and releasing, you know, bad karma and all of these things. I believed that. That's the cover story yeah, for yeah. what was going on. It's and interesting, you know, it's interesting, Purvi, you saying that because myself and my mother um, went through similar things, not exactly what you're saying, but similar. And the advice we were given by our um, guides was the unpleasant symptoms were ascension symptoms and that they would soon pass away but you know like yourself they didn't pass away for us and I hear so many people who have been through meditation or yoga who say the same thing you know that often they were actually at the point of death because of the symptoms that came upon them doing these um, practices but please please yeah. please continue yes yes it's the same lies these demons really are liars and that's why the Bible's so beautifully true and and clear that satan is a liar the king of lies and you know second corinthians 11 14 through 15 says and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works mm -hmm. and so the way that these demons disguise themselves is different but it's always as something good mm -hmm. now one of the cover stories is that you are not you know it's not it's not spirits or anything that's making this happen to you you know as i mentioned it's your enlightenment it's your process of your your overcoming your karma and all of these things mm -hmm. other uh, another cover story um you know d d during uh, one of the classes that is offered at Isha Yoga is a Guru Puja. And so it's a worship and actually calling in on various gurus from past. You're actually calling in these beings. You think that they're gurus mm -hmm. that you're, you're bringing into the presence of the room. And these gurus, you believe when you're doing this puja, puja means worship, your act of worship, that you're calling them there and that they're helping you. So you're bringing the presence consciously of beings into mm -hmm. that place and then mm -hmm. that scripture really comes to light there because these are these are not um you know benevolent beings these are not gurus there to help you or anything else these are demons that are masquerading as angels of light that you are inviting into that place mm -hmm. so that is you know clearly what what's happening here which I now see, you know, but the Guru Puja is a huge thing in Isha Yoga and in, in Hinduism. And so it's just known that you think that these beings are, are helping you sure, and you're calling sure. on things. So it's very much like the same, the same kind of idea as, as um, calling on your spirit guides or your dead ancestors. Same type yeah. of idea as that. Yeah exactly exactly the same thing and these demons it will use any costume or masquerade as anything that will get your attention according to your cultural background according to your life mm -hmm. i mean they're very cunning they know what will work for you if it's mm -hmm. a dead relative that's going to pull your heartstrings more so and and make you more susceptible to their um you know uh tricks then they'll use that mm -hmm. disguise mm -hmm. if it's whatever will work to trick i mean this is some severe level of, of deception going on mm -hmm. and so you know so i'm i'm yoking with these things that's what i'm doing because yoga actually means to yoke that's what it means the definition yoga is actually the oh, i don't even pronounce the a but it's yoga it means to yoke and if you're yoking with something you want to know what you're yoking with and uh now i realize that it are uh, it's these demonic beings and you can't find you know uh freedom when you're shackled you're you're when you have handcuffs on and you're looking to you know wear them as bracelets of freedom they're only shackles and the only one that can release any bondage is Jesus Christ, Yeshua. In Matthew 11, 28 through 29, it says, He says, He's speaking here, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Take my, my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest into your souls. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So there is a rest in our souls. That's what I was seeking for. Mm -hmm. I was 
seeking for rest in my soul. I wanted to yoke with whoever could give me rest, but I was looking in all the wrong places, ended up yoking up with these demonic beings. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and praise God, hallelujah, that I got to come, I came to know, you know, the truth of, 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 of where the real peace comes from in, in Jesus. So that, that was later on. So here I am, uh, you know, not realizing that there's some spiritual wickedness in high places, uh, you know, working through this whole system that I'm inviting these things in, not realizing uh, you know, that this is so much more than is going on than meets the, the eye. Mm -hmm. And that these are just wiles of the devil. And, uh, and you know, it's interesting because we are to glorify God in our bodies as well as our spirits. That is what, you know, the Bible says that we're to do. And this is, yoga is a counterfeit. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, says what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? For you are bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Mm -hmm. Our body, our spirit, everything, after we, we become born again, you know, we live and we want to glorify God with everything, our, all our mind, all our soul, all our strength. And so yoga is a way to yoke with the, the counterfeit. And it's glorifying the demonic in your body mm -hmm. as a place for them to thrive. And so everything that the devil does is a, a counterfeit trying to be like God and trying to get the worship of God. And it's, you know, from the beginning the same lies of the serpent are have slithered on through the centuries and it's the same uh you know nothing new under the sun going on here that same serpent from the beginning lying um you know through hinduism through through yoga it's the same thing you know kundalini a lot many know that that means actually the serpent force that's yeah. what it means yeah. It's a form of yoga. So just to be clear, before I, I, I haven't forgotten, I will continue with my testimony. But just to be clear that there's various forms of yoga. And so, you know, there's the bhakti yoga, which you see a lot in the Hare Ram, Hare Krishna movement. Uh, there's the jnana yoga, which is about knowledge that you saw in the you see in the transcendental uh, meditation, you know, the Maharishi, Mahesh Yogi, that whole movement, you know. There is the... Um, Osho was into more of the tantric yoga, and that's more where uh, the guru that I was following was also into. It was tantric, uh, tantric type of yoga. And just to give people an idea, that's a practice, in, and it's a combination of using postures and chantings and, and hand posturings and um, locking certain systems, like in your, using your chakras in your body, various uh, power points in your body to, to, to manipulate those energies. That's a form of tantric yoga. So that's mm -hmm. the type that I was getting into. And, and, and Kundalini is very, very much uh, a huge part of all. Of, of all of it, especially in, with Tantric Yoga as it relates to the chakras, the energy centers, that serpent force at the base of the spine. And so that serpent, again, you know, it's just very revealing because scripture tells us that the serpent from the beginning is deceiving people. You know, in Genesis 3.13, and the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. And when we look at the word beguiled in uh, the Hebrew, nasha, it means to lead astray, to delude, to seduce. Mm -hmm. And so this seduction that comes, you know, he was the most seducing and cunning of all the creatures. The, the seduction that comes with the serpent is not to be underestimated, okay? It's, it's a very powerful thing. Of course, God, hallelujah, is above all of that. Mm -hmm. But that seductive force is very luring. And so it will work on your emotions. It will work on your actual physical body to seduce you into its system lure you and trap you kind of like a you know a, in a spider's web and, and as you said perfect that, that these things you know 
with God, we be glorify God, even with our bodies. But within within yoga and within Hinduism, the people, the postures that that are adopted, you know, it's actually like mimicking those Hindu gods or glorifying in a sense those Hindu gods people might argue well I'm not worshipping them no but but you are taking on the forum or mimicking those gods as it, as it were and you are yoking with them even if you don't realise you're doing it that is actually what you're doing because you know, a lot of the yogis will say that 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 is the ultimate aim it's all about enlightenment and, and reaching this place of of connecting with these gods it's not just about relaxation like so many of us in the west think it's all about exactly exactly it's spiritual and people don't understand that and you're absolutely right the postures are very meaningful as i've said before you know this whole yogic process and the postures even in just the hatha yoga okay let me explain hatha yoga is the physical aspect as i said there's many different types of yoga but why are there many different types of yoga they're all designed as a system for a spiritual purpose which is actually very dangerous and deceptive because the serpent is behind it and exactly that it deceives people into thinking that it's not a big deal. This is another lie of, of the serpent. So they think it's just exercise. You know, these are all lies of the serpent and, and, and the lie that we can become enlightened. You know, all of this is nothing new under the sun. In, in Genesis 3.13, as I mentioned, she said, the serpent beguiled me. And what was the lie? that he beguiled her with. In Genesis 3, 4, and 5 we read, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall surely not die, even though God said you will if you eat this. And he goes on to say, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, mm -hmm. knowing good and evil. So here we are, the same lie. The Kundalini, the Kundalini serpent, yoga through yoga is giving the promise of opening one's third eye the chakra in the center of the forehead mm -hmm. which you see very commonly um, symbolized by the bindi that people mark on their forehead right in between their eyebrows uh, that the promise of opening up the third eye through this whole uh, spiritual process and then one will become enlightened, which is what it's trying to be as God. So this is all the same type of lies, just, you know, um, just slightly tweaked a bit, but it's all the same lies of Satan, really seducing people. And you're so right about that, uh, the excuses that are made to be able to partake in these systems, thinking that it's it's benevolent it's, or it's harmless. I mean, it's really no different than, uh, you know, uh, as I've said before, just carving out a satanic pentagram on the on the ground with satanists because you think it's good exercise what are you doing these are this is this is absolutely satanic to the core you are worshiping in the form that was designed to glorify demons mm -hmm. i mean that's what it is so yeah there, there's some it's some sad deception going out there today where people are making excuses for this type of activity for sure and so i was uh, definitely completely beguiled myself mm -hmm. uh, by the serpent and now the, the, the effects were starting to reveal its, its true colors so which is a good thing because at first you know when you're in that euphoria you, you never want to let it go because it feels so good and, and it really is as a drug and mm -hmm. I want to I want to state that because we cannot trust in soul, just our, our, our feelings as an indicator of truth. You know, when somebody takes a drug, they feel good, but that doesn't mean that, you know, that the, the drug is good for them by any means. So, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, yoga feels good, good and also scientifically they've proven that it, it's it's good for us. They've monitored people and they're showing that the, the chemically, scientifically, yoga is good for people. So what's your problem? Well, I would say spirits entering into the body will chemically alter the system. And even, you know, creating feelings of peace as a drug would, as I said, those euphoric feelings, I'm sure all kinds of um, adrenaline and, and various chemical processes. And so this peace, mm -hmm. okay, so-called peace is then experientially felt 
and accredited to the action, in, in this case the yogic practice, which elicited the entrance of the spirit. And then you see that it's really supernatural going on with this with this piece, but it's a false piece. Mm-hmm. It's false piece. It's all um, a, a demonic you know, counterfeit. It's witchcraft. It's really witchcraft to come down to it and be really raw with it. I was partaking in witchcraft without knowing it. I think a lot of people might might think, might say, that's a bit extreme. But really, you know, when you consider it, people all around the world practice yoga and meditation to... And I mean people who are de- are doing it in a spiritual way. I'm not talking about people who are just doing it for relaxation and they don't seem to realize it's spiritual. I mean people who are doing it spiritually, whether it's New Agers or mediums or shamans, whether they live in Africa, whether they are Hindus. You know, a lot of people deliberately do yoga and meditation to open doors so that they can do spirit communication of some form or another whether it's talking to ancestors or talking to what they think are dead people or guides you know my mother yep. myself were told one of the main things we were told to do to progress and clairvoyance was yoga and meditation and we were, yeah. to- we were told that by the mediums so it, it is spiritual and it is witchcraft it, it is it makes perfect sense that they would guide that i mean mm-hmm. It's absolute sense now uh, that they that they would you know lead people in that direction because they're all various tricks of Satan. So yeah, it it really is um, very very sad because it plays on your emotion. I mean, who doesn't want enlightenment and to feel good? And how encouraging it could be to think, oh wow, I'm actually making my soul progress. Like it's super exciting. Mm-hmm. And you realize you've just been duped. It's like, it's like you know, a date rape drug or something that may make you feel some, some euphoria, and then you realize the next morning you got taken advantage of, and that it was all a lie, mm-hmm. and you've been just completely deceived. That's how, uh, what I came to realize, and so how that process happened of that realization was very painful process but i'm so glad because it took a lot to humble me i was very prideful i was so convinced and i know that if i wasn't this broken uh at the point that i came to that i would not have um you know, let go of my beliefs even in a, a severely sick state of body mm-hmm. for a while i still held on to the yoga in fact I went to my guru who had come to the United States because I came back to the U.S. I was forced to live with my parents in a very sick, sick state. Um, I couldn't live in my apartment anymore. I was that sick after I came back from India doing all of those things. And my guru at the time, Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev from Isha Yoga, was nearby. And so even in a very sick state, I went to go see him. And he and he just told me to do more yoga, and that he would send a blessed piece of cloth to me, mm-hmm. and all these things, and just you know. So for a while, I was still trying to hold on to that, but there came a point where it, it just everything just kept getting worse. That I just knew I can't continue to do this, and I became, you know, very very uh, suicidal. I was also manifesting more clear uh, levels of demonic possession. Now, what I mean is, you know, before it was like this yeah, laughter and this euphoria, and but there's a range of ways that these demons will manifest. So now it was really showing its colors of where its intent in, intentions were at, because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, that's what John Tintin says. And so it's true. I was waking up in the middle of the night, choking my own self, putting my hands on my own throat. Mm-hmm. This, this stuff never happened to me before. I was talking in a voice that wasn't mine saying, I'm going to take you all down with me, you know, in front of my parents. I was, I was all kinds of manifestations and things were happening. And I came to the point where I I was convinced that suicide was the best answer. There was a railroad track near my parents' house, and I was so excited about the thought that if nothing else works, I'll be out of pain once I can Mm -hmm. go there. Because I was so broken, 
alone and just so sick and, and, and suffering that it really, really felt like the best way out. And um, I, I really know now that the, the demons will interject thoughts and all kinds of things. And when and I was very much possessed. So these things that seem like a good idea, you know, to kill myself, mm-hmm. to come kill, steal and destroy. Mm-hmm. And so I was at that vulnerable place. Um, I just can't tell you the level of vulnerability. I, I think people that are truly suicidal understand that have been there where it's just an utter hopelessness. It's not just a, oh gosh, I wish I was dead. Um, it, it's a real, real seriousness about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I was going to do it. I, and then, and that level of brokenness, I was searching the internet for anything that can help me. I was just desperate. I had already spent my life savings trying to save my life. And nothing was working. And I finally um, kept coming across the Bible. And again, my initial reaction was like, I don't want to hear anything about the Bible and these Christians. And that's not where the truth is. I need real help. Mm -hmm. I, I rejected it, but the Bible kept coming up. And, um, specifically about prophecy and the times that we're in and Revelation 13, 16, and 17 about the mark of the beast. All these things started, that one really hit me. Mm -hmm. And I, okay, well, maybe part of the Bible's true. That's fine. You know, my my, uh, conclusion was, but, you know, other uh, religious texts in Hinduism and, and Buddhism and so forth are also true. They're all true. You know, that philosophy, right? Mm-hmm. There's there's truth in everything. So yeah, yeah. I, I that's what I was like, okay, I'll just, that's fine. But I said that Jesus stuff that people talk about, and I've heard it before, that people talk about, you know, he died for our sins and this and that. I just don't believe that stuff because it sounds like a fairy tale to me. It just sounds like some made up myth and I don't believe that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I said, but there's nothing to hurt, and let me just do an experiment and try calling on this this Jesus myself, because I've, no. I've never done that, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I went up to my room by myself. All of this, you know, there was no one telling me or showing me anything. The Lord was just leading me through stuff I was seeing on the Internet by myself in that vulnerability. I just went by myself upstairs. And from the sincerity and depth of my heart, I just said, hey, I'm calling on you now. If you're real, this Jesus stuff is real, and I don't know what to believe, and I really need help, and, you know, I'm suicidal. And if you are real, let me just try calling on you now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just, the moment I said that out of my mouth, with the sincerity of my heart of seeking, my body started shaking. I didn't know at that time that the Bible said that the demons tremble at his name, and I didn't know Mm -hmm. what was happening, but that was enough to build my faith and think, there's something to this. Mm -hmm. I need Mm -hmm. to know more. And I built my curiosity, and I continued to, you know, kind of pray, hey, if you're real, show me more, and let me just check out the Bible. And so I got a Bible and I started reading more and faith comes by hearing the word of God. And I was just seeking truth. And as I was reading the Bible and, and doing this, these experiments in my prayer, you know, just, and, and really asking for, to know the truth and very sincere for the first time of my, in my life to any biblical truth. Mm-hmm. I came to the point, the most beautiful Thing in my life ever, ever to happen. I came to the point where I just, I did become born again. And what I did on this day, it was life transformative. I did not realize how huge what I was, what I did was at the time. I went up to my room and I just said from the depth of my being and sincerity from my heart, I, I was convinced and I, and I just surrendered to him and I just, I just said, be my savior, be my Lord, forgive me of my sin. And this it's all yours. It's at your feet. I said, I'm going to follow you now. 
And I really meant it. And I said, I am going to follow you now. Be my savior. I trust in you for everything. And I am yours. Now I am your servant. And I just handed my life over to him and in repentance and just really asking him to you know, forgive me of my sins. And I had no clue how powerful that is. Mm-hmm. You talk about supernatural power, you know, all this supernatural demonic power that's conjured up by all these you know, yoga and all the rituals and the chantings and things. Yeah, there's stuff that happens to you. But what happened to me supernaturally that day is beyond any, it's it's permanent, it's lasting, it's pure, it's true, it's a real cleansing, it's the peace I was looking for my whole life, it was the real deal, and that supernatural power that changed me when I became born again and the Holy Spirit filled me was so intense and real and, and amazing, nothing can compare, and only then after being born again can I could I even see the counterfeit? Mm-hmm. I, I, I had eyes to see now. My scales had fallen off. I became a new creation. Everything in my life changed from that moment. My physical healing was a slow process, but it started from that day uh, physically. And and now I'm not struggling with any of those physical things, and, and it's all glory to God. I, the, how much He's brought me through just with physical help and healing is incredible but also just mentally and emotionally in every way to be able to see the world in a whole new light. I had the peace that surpasses all understanding Mm -hmm. in the midst of difficult circumstances. It was a noticeable change in my life from that moment. Mm -hmm. And I realized I had been searching high and low, working so hard for this enlightenment of my soul. And the whole time, Yeshua, Jesus, was, was calling me and saying, you know, here, take rest in me. My burden is light. Here, all who that are heavy and, and heavy laden and labor, I will give you rest for your souls. I will do that. Just take my yoke upon you. And so that moment, you know, hallelujah, I let go of the yoke that I was yoked to mm-hmm. with the, the same with through Hindu uh, through, the, through the Hinduism and the yoga that I was involved went in and I yoked when we become born again we, we are yoked with Yeshua with Jesus and it was so beautiful I had been reconciled to the Father it was a, a whole new life and I'm so 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 grateful um, it was difficult for you know family members to understand this change there's a lot of um, negative perception around the Bible and Christians, you know, and so there's a lot of misconceptions out there. But through it all, I just had so much peace and and and, and loving people, even though they would not understand, you know. So yeah. there was just so much help and and supernatural help, real help in trouble. He says he's a real help in trouble, and I'm I'm here to testify that this. This is the truth. The Bible is the truth. That this is the real God we're talking about. The creator of the universe is a real help in trouble. It's not that we will not have difficult times in this life. We will. Even the Bible says we will have tribulation in this life. But not to fear because he has overcome the world. And when we trust in him, we have a real help in trouble. We have uh, a personal God, mm-hmm. which is so different than the the Hindu understanding. Yes, they have many different uh, so-called gods that they pray to, and all these so-called gurus, and, and they, they, you know, there's a seeking to have some kind of personal relationship, but there's always this very impersonal karmic force and this impersonal, you know, Brahma that you that you're trying to to merge with. It's all very impersonal. And what's so beautiful is to understand the love of God is so personal for our lives. Mm-hmm. And that's what you become in a conversation with him and in a relationship with him when you can talk with him personally. I mean, this is God that knows every hair on our head, that knows the intricate details of our life, that loves us, that cares, 
you know, but he doesn't force anybody to love him. He's reaching out his hand to people and maybe to you, to somebody today listening. He's reaching out his hand and knocking on the door of your heart saying, will you let me in? I am here. I take my yoke upon you. I, I am here to, to help you find rest for your souls. He's the only one that can actually forgive us of our sin that has taken that penalty upon himself nobody else ever could do that mm -hmm. he's he's the only one no guru mm -hmm. no so-called um enlightened being you know jesus said himself that all others that came before him uh you know are not true not to to follow them that they're 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 liars and thieves and deceivers and so there is a truth in, in all of this. What's so beautiful is no matter how real and deceptive the works of Satan are in so many ways, really, in, in mind-boggling ways upon the earth, including in the major deceptions uh, that he has woven through and in, in created in Hinduism and, and uh, mind-emptying meditations and, and all of these vain philosophies that lead nowhere. It's kind of like a hamster on a wheel. You think you're going somewhere and it leads nowhere nowhere through all of that what's so beautiful is that there is a real truth there is a real help there is somebody who is is willing to you know i always say he pulled me out of the mouth of the lion mm -hmm. i was in the deepest darkest pit i was about to be devoured and he that's his love i mean he loves us so much. i was about to be devoured and he rescued me from the mouth of the lion a very true, you know, loving God. And so that's what he wants to do for us. We just have to be humble enough to allow him to. And that's the problem with, with, with people is we have so much pride of what we think we know. But I would encourage anybody that's on the fence or, or just thinking about these things that in, in their private prayer time, in your private prayer time, just go and seek. You know, the scripture says, seek and you will find. If you are sincere, he will hear you. Do not give up. If you want to know the truth, you know, seek him with all your heart and, and read the Bible and, and pray that, you, that, it, that uh, he reveals things to you through, through the word in the New Testament, especially just, just seek these things. And, you know, he is, he is mighty to save and mighty to show us the way because he is the way, the truth and the life. He is it. I mean, I, I can't, you know, stress that enough because in the philosophy that I was so entrenched in, it's very much um, prevalent in New Age as well because there's a lot of Hinduism repackaged in New Age, is that there's so many paths that that all roads lead to, to the same God, that, that there's many different ways to reach uh, peace, enlightenment, heaven, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's completely contrary to what Jesus himself says, that he is the only way, that without him you cannot get to the Father. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that no one comes to the Father except by Him. That is what He says. And so this is very exclusive. It's a very exclusive statement, and it's the truth. And so that's why, you know, people say, oh, this is extreme, and why do you have to just, you know, put down other faiths, and you're intolerant, and all of these things, these false accusations, really, because the truth is that true Christians, we love people. We want them to be saved and we want them to know the truth and where the life jacket is yeah. if you give yeah. somebody you know um a cereal box and tell them that they're going to be able to ride out a storm in it that's a lie and and even if they believe they can when the storm comes they will see that they will sink and so we want to be able to give those real life jackets and say hey this is the truth and he can save you and do not trust in a cereal box you know it has there's nothing there mm -hmm. and and so mm -hmm. people don't like their lies to be broken their bubbles to be broken but you know, hallelujah for those that are speaking the truth. And sister, you, you know, for exposing the devil and the works of his darkness and, and sharing testimonies and helping people because it's out of love. I know that you do it and that any of us do this because it's the love of God. Contrary to what the world says and falsely accuses Christians yeah, of being yeah, absolutely. Small, so 
you know, uh, when I was into yoga and meditation myself, when I was in New Age and, and spiritualism, I would have been the first to say, Jesus Christ is not the saviour, he's not the only way, there are multiple other gods, you know, but back then I didn't know, for example, that when people have visions of past lives, when people experience feelings of reincarnation, they think they've been here mm -hmm. before, etc., that would seem to give evidence for karma and so on. I didn't know back then that that was actually, those kind of experiencing experiences and those kind of visions were actually empowered by demons. Yes. Uh, you know, and after I got born again and I had deliverance, I had demons cast out of me. Uh, and yes. I know so many people uh, who have been through that too, people who then, after their deliverance, they stopped having um, visions about reincarnation. They stopped having um, visits from so-called spirits and so on because really the truth is in Jesus Christ and all of that, although the people mean well, of course the people mean well and we're not involved in, in hating people whatsoever. The people yes. really do mean well, but sadly are deceived, just like you were saying earlier, pervy about the, the serpent right back from the Garden of Eden. Amen. It's so true. It's so true. And and the scales are on are on thick, especially in these days. And it's only gonna get worse with the deceptions of the enemy. It really is on the earth. And and and, and just as the scripture says that, you know, false accusations against true followers of Christ it goes with the territory and it's and it's going to be there and it's going to get get worse and that's okay we we don't even mind so much you know that that we're hated it's for christ's sake but we're grieved at the, at seeing the deception so yeah, so, so you know, the the prayer is just that that people will wake up and and, and give this a thought that could this could something that you thought was good and benevolent and helpful to you you know, actually be demonic, start that thought process and, and seek the truth and seek prayer and read the Bible because you can't afford not to know the truth when it comes to this stuff. I mean, this is dangerous. This is mm -hmm. this is the eternity, your your soul's eternity at stake. There's nothing more important here. That, exactly, you know. exactly. And the, the teaching within, within Hinduism and, and many other um, religions as well, that whole, um, you know, teaching of karma and so on that you have to come back multiple times you have to reincarnate to work out your karma and become better yes. in the next life you ask yes. Jesus Christ into your heart and your slate is wiped clean instantly there's no working on your part there's no human striving as I say there is no karma because we do only live once and then we die there is no reincarnation and Jesus Christ he brings you that instant enlightenment as soon as you get born again because his light, he is the light and he is the truth and there is no need for this um, this karma and this coming back all the time to, to reincarnate. Um, and I think that's so beautiful. Jesus does that in an instant. Yeah, he, 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 he is everything. It is amazing what happens when, when, when one is born again. I mean, really, everything changes. And then there is a sanctification process, you know, um, a, a growing in the faith. And there is sanctification. And there are, you know, there's going to be struggles in life because this is we're still not in resurrected form yet you know but how different is it when there's a personal guide and and a god with us mm -hmm. to help us as we lean on him for all his strength you know as the scripture says that we can do all things through christ who strengthens us it's his strength now we don't live for ourselves anymore we're dying to ourselves and we've just completely given it up to him and realizing his identity and who we are in him with that we become Become new creations in Christ, and it, it is an amazing thing that happens when when we're born again. It's really mind-boggling. I don't think we even understand fully, or can fully understand and comprehend it even now. But it's just so beautiful. That's the only word that I can say. Mm -hmm. And even as we go through life and the various life things that happen, uh, you know, there there's there can be real peace in the midst of the storms of life. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, weeping endures for a moment, but joy comes in the morning. And, and, and you know, a supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of, you know, walking through the valley of the shadow of death. 
it doesn't matter what we're going through. And, and even our, if we're on our deathbed, you know, there's that confidence and peace that God can give mm-hmm. that, you know, we're going to not have to, you know, be fearful of that if we're, you know, born again followers of Christ. It's it's not a bad thing to physically die. I mean, there's really nothing, you know, to fear. It's not that fear never comes up. It's not that there's not spiritual battles. There are spiritual battles, but you know, because the scripture says in Ephesians six eleven through twelve, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So now the war has begun. We're soldiers in Christ as we become born again, but we have a real help in trouble and an army to back us up. And and it's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different life. Amen. And we have nothing. just five minutes to go, Purvey. So I just want to okay. ask you a few more sure. questions. What strikes sure. me also is that you know, in God's eyes, He loves every person the same. Um, and you know, at, at Calvary's cross, when you come to the cross, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, we are all equal. We are all equal spiritually. Whereas in the caste system in Hindu uh, Hinduism. You know, it's, yes. it's, it's quite unfair that the different levels of, of caste they have there. So that's another little indication that, you know, something's not quite right there, um, as, as you have already said. But with yeah. Jesus, with Jesus, there are no different castes. Um, he sees us all the same. He loves us all the same. Um, also, yes. you know, I wanted to say, I find it interesting that within the New Age or today, they might call themselves spiritual seekers or, or what what you know so on a lot of people will say today well i'm just spiritual and i wish all religions um would end and and that we just all could be together as one but often people who say that are very much into yoga and meditation so again it's interesting because although they might say they wish all religions were dead they're actually using yoga and meditation that you know originates and things like hinduism and so on so it's a bit of a, a contradiction i feel um, to say mm-hmm. that because they all get in the meditation they do involve spirit forces they do involve yes. demonic energies um, yes. so um, we've only got a f- couple of minutes left I wanted to ask you your opinion on so called Christian yoga um, because I know we, we think the same way about that could you sum that up in a sentence or two and then please give us information of your blog and website and please uh, pray for the audience Yes, yes, absolutely. So Christian yoga, I believe, is an oxymoron. Um, We can't use practices that were designed specifically to yoke with what we now know as demons Mm -hmm. and, and put a cover on it, costume on it, and call it Christian. We are not to be unequally yoked. We can't, you know, uh, do these things. It, it's mm-hmm. spiritual idolatry. And so, you know, we have to stay away from these things. And so definitely uh, not not a good idea. Uh, as far as uh, information, where to contact us, martusministry.org, M-A-R-T-U-S-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y.org. And also the YouTube channel is P-U-R-V, like Victory, I-G-I-G-G-L-E. That's the the YouTube channel. And uh, also Martis Ministry Facebook. So you can get a hold of us that way. And you can put prayer requests at the website or through Facebook or whatnot. And yes, you know, I am I am really, really, really blessed with what God, I'm just humbled by what what I have been shown and I just want others to know because I know what it's like to be confused and lost and dark and broken and so I don't know where any of you may be right now listening or or maybe even in your walk with Christ you know where you may be having difficulties or anything but I just encourage you whoever you are to just surrender more to surrender first of all if you haven't completely to Jesus to Yeshua and if you have and you're struggling to surrender even more there's no better thing to do there's not enough surrender that we can give just giving it all up to him hallelujah so um sister would you like me to pray yes and please please uh, please uh, lead the, the audience in a prayer of salvation i believe that there'll be many that will hear this that would like to come to jesus today yes hallelujah so if you are 
seeking the shelter and, and, and that only Jesus can give, then just it's about your heart. It's not about the words. It's about your sincerity. And so, you know, just just surrender to him, understanding who he is, that he's the only one to surrender to. And just seeking him and saying, Father God, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, I'm coming to you. I seek to be a new creation in Christ. I seek to be born again by the Holy Spirit as I just surrender all to you. Just forgive me of all the sins, all the ways that I've transgressed against you my whole life. Anything that I've done, just forgive me. I'm just turning it all over to you, just putting it right at your feet. And, and I just need you to save me. And I, I want to follow you now. It's my whole life I'm just putting at your feet. Just lead and guide my ways. Not my will be done, but your will be done in my life. And, and here I am. I'm offering it to you and trusting you as my personal God, my Lord, my Savior. Understanding what you did for me and taking my sin upon your shoulders when you died on the cross. It was, it was real and it was for me and you didn't have to do it. It's because of your love for me, that you wanted me to be free from the wages of sin and death, that you would do such a thing. And your love is so great and merciful, and I thank you so much for that, for the, for paying the price for me. And I received that gift, and I just want to live my whole life for, for you from now on. In the name of Jesus, just just saying these things from your, from your heart and seeking out is, is, is the... Is, is everything. It's a heart issue. He knows our heart. It's so beautiful when we just simply ask for forgiveness, you know, sincerely, what can happen in the spirit moment. If I can just pray for, for everyone, whoever you are, Father Abba, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, I truly pray that everybody is blessed listening right now, wherever they are in their walk with you, whatever they're doing, whoever they are, that you just reveal yourself more to them, more of your will be manifest in their life as they go and, and just be on fire for you, that as they read your word, that you just manifest yourself to them more and more, and as they seek you, in all their ways that you direct their paths. Hallelujah, God, for you are great and worthy to be praised. I pray that praise and worship be on the lips of all of us, those listening and us always, and that we have proper perspective and, and that we don't try to do things in our own strength, but through you who strengthens us because you are a real God with supernatural help. And we just thank you for all you do and seek you more and more every day. And we just surrender right now and give you all the glory in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Purvey. And listeners, you can find more information at martisministry.org and Martis Ministry on Facebook and Purvey Giggle on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening and God bless. God bless. Thank you, Sister. Thank you. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio.